Just look this way. Thank you for joining us. This is live with Miami's Community News and I'm Michael Miller and our special guest today is Michelle Shirley. You are the CEO and Chief Heart Officer yes. of Be Strong International. Thank you for being here. Absolutely, it's my pleasure to be and here. We met a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and when we first met, you were, you were doing a show with somebody here mm -hmm. and I said, come here, we need to talk. <laughs> And when I, before we even met, when I saw you back there, I said, there's something special about this lady. What is it, all right? And then we did a show together, and then we said, you should do your own show. And you jumped right in. You have cold water and everything. You said, I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna go do that. You are a consummate professional. I've seen dozens of your shows over the last couple of years, and you really do extraordinary things. So let's do a little back history for uh, about you. You got your MBA from Barry. You joined Be Strong International in 2005 and worked with the team there. Right. And then 2012, you became the CEO. Anytime I goof it up, you just tell yes, me. Yes, right? well, so not the Masters of Health Administration, right? My goal was to become this CEO of a big hospital, right? I was all about helping people. Um, but yes, I did become the CEO in 2012. But I had been with the organization since 2005. Mm -hmm. And during that time from 2005 to 2012, it grew from a quarter million dollars to $3 million plus. It's helped a lot of people, a lot. Yeah. The, yeah. the team that is there is really extraordinary. You personally are active in the Gables Chamber, Chamber South, South Dade Chamber, um, Children's Trust, and yeah. you were just um, received some acknowledged by the South Florida Business Journal. Congratulations on that. Yes, from from um, so from Bank of America, we actually received um, two hundred thousand um, dollars unrestricted, which is mind blowing in the nonprofit space. So they've given us the freedom to create and to innovate to use those dollars as we best see fit, uh, which is really incredible. <laughs> so, and um, let's talk about what Be Strong what its mission is and how you're implementing that. Right, so, so our mission is really all about heart skills. How do we help people to understand, you know, how their will, their intellect, their emotions, um, all make up who they are as an individual and how they relate to other people? How do we help them do that well? How do we help people love each other well? better than before. And so sometimes we always think that we're doing a good job, whether we're parenting our children and or married, you know, and your spouse is like, you know, you're doing well. But it's that self-reflection time that we are talking about and that we teach so that people can have better relationships with one another. So um, we want to move individuals and families from brokenness to wholeness. When we talk about brokenness, it's the negative patterns, the traumas that people experience that they bring over into all of their relationships. And so we always tell people, no matter what, you are in a relationship, whether you choose to or not, right? We're in a business relationship, right? Because I'm contracted to do shows with community newspapers. Um, I have a relationship with my team members. I have a relationship with my children, with my mom, with my spouse. But how do I navigate those, right? How do I work on these challenges that we face in our different relationships? And so Be Strong offers workshops on how to do just that. So when we talk about families, I, I can't help but think about in front of the youth fair site, there's some sculptures that are out front. And years ago, I noticed that it was three people. Mm. One person, an adult, and two kids. Mm. And so we know that a lot of people are divorced, and maybe the, the parents can handle it, but they're the children who are broken inside or, or hurt a little bit yeah. and how they blend in with the with the person they live with and how they keep a relationship if that's what they want to do with the other uh, yeah. with the member that you yeah. know that's not there so when people go to you sometimes they're they're pretty upset about things so how do you, how do you help with these programs walk people through that so there's a lot of pain I mean I think in any relationship it, there's conflict there's adversity you know, there's things that, you know, you have to overcome. Um, when they come to us, um, we don't necessarily do a diagnosis, but we know they're coming to us because they're interested in learning about how we can help them. Um, depending on the program, then that determines the route that we best take them through. So, for example, with our marriage program, which is called Marriage Matters, as a matter of fact, Grant recently came and covered one of our events. 
Um, those couples are coming because they're interested in thinking deeper about how they can keep the spark alive. There may be some nuances there where, you know, something happened or maybe they're just realizing like, you know, we're not, we don't have that joy that we used to have. We're not on the same page all the time. Here's a free program. And when people hear the word free, I mean, that automatically allows people to gravitate to our website, but they come in. And so those case managers that are there, walk them through, assess where they are and whether or not the main question is, do you plan to remain together, right? Because if you don't, then we have a medical director that we can refer them to that goes a little deeper into like maybe walking them through if they should decide to separate. But if they want to stay together and they say yes, then they're able to take an assessment and we walk them through the course. And it's an eight-week program. And, and so often when, there's, when one spouse says to the other, hey, how about doing this? It's maybe the first time in a long time that they've expressed about Let's let's look at this. Let's see if it can work. Yeah. And uh, years ago, I took a marriage uh, course. It was over the weekend. It was yeah. really extraordinary. I remember yeah. like it was yesterday, wow. sitting knee to knee and, and communicating. And it was a long line. You would say something, and they would repeat back to you, this is what I heard you say. Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? No. <laughs> what did, well, what did you mean to say? And it would go back and forth finally. This is what you said. Is that what you said? Yes. Well, this is this is. What, what I heard. That's what I heard. So you're familiar right. with this. So this active, that, that sort of active listening, right? Um, not thinking about the response, but actually taking the time to process what the person is saying. And I always tell couples too, the reason why you want to join Marriage Matters or get go to a conference like what you did, you don't want to wait till something bad happens. You don't want to wait till there's a crisis. I think we spend a lot of time on you know, other things like we want to excel in our careers. So we take extra courses. We want to learn about stocks before we invest in the stock market. So why don't we invest in our marriage before things, bad things happen? What about as you're unpeeling this onion and you're getting closer to the heart of things, right? People sometimes are obviously very hesitant in sharing that with other people that were within earshot. Yeah. How, do, how do people become comfortable enough to share that with their spouse? Uh, so I think the facilitators are really well trained in the icebreakers, the light talks in the beginning. You know, people aren't usually apt to going 100 percent deep in the very beginning of a workshop. It's not the norm, although you have people that are very transparent. But we have the facilitators that are trained to walk them through some of the lessons that really, like you said, it beginning of peeling the onion. So what is your dream for your marriage? What do you see you guys being in the next 10 years? What does that look like? You know, having those conversations, and I think it's non-threatening conversations at first. Um, and then they go deeper into, you know, having discussions about where are some areas where we don't quite align and how do we get towards that common, that common ground? So it takes a bit of time. So as you explain this, so you realize that you have years and years experience and that what caused you to go from the thought about working for a big hospital, big healthcare facility, <laughs> to doing this? What was that trigger, that final thing that pushed you? I don't know if I thought about it as much as I think the stars aligned for me in that way. Um, so after graduating from Barry University, um, I went to work for a low-income clinic. Um, now it's called, I believe, Jesse Trice uh, Cent Family Health Center. Um, and there I saw so much. I saw so much need for just people who are diabetic that needed the right you know, care, the nutrition plans, and just seeing so much going on with dental and medical needs for people who couldn't afford health care. And so I was still on that path until I found out about a program that helped kids with teen pregnancy prevention. And I thought that was interesting. Where is this coming from? So the federal government was releasing program um, dollars for teen pregnancy prevention. And so I worked with the team on that grant contract because they were applying for it and they didn't get it. Be Strong got it. And so when the CEO at the time realized that she got the award, she knew the people who worked at the Family Health Center because they had already were collaborating on some efforts and she brought all of us to Be Strong. So that's how I ended up at Be Strong, just by volunteering to work on a grant assignment. And I became the office manager in 2005. So I still hadn't touched programs. This was just like, oh my gosh, I'm the office manager. I had the yeah. pleasure of attending <laughs> one of your 
annual events recently. And I uh, distinct honor to meet the originator of it, the little lady. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> I'm wearing hearing aids again. But, so we just nodded. Right, 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 right. And one of the great things I think that I was able to remind her of, I said, look what happened, because this was an idea, you know, many years ago. And, and look at the great team that is there now. Now, there's an event that's coming up on November 16th. Tell us about that. Give Miami Day. Um, so it is the probably the largest event of philanthropy giving. Hold on, could you run their the um, their website address? Uh, in Miami, um, sponsored through or given by the Miami Foundation, and it is nonprofits everywhere for one day or for about three days, asking the entire South Miami, the Miami community, to give to a nonprofit that they you know want to support. So we're on there. And we are trying to raise $20,000 to support some of our programs, but we are hoping that people will give on that day. Yeah. So people are going to see a lot of publicity about that. I'm sure we're going to see it on the radio stations, the TV stations. Yes. And so the concept is to be able to give to, is it directly to them or directly to you? So on that page, they will pull up Be Strong International and they can give directly through that platform. Yes, the Miami Foundation platform. Give and Miami it, Day. It's an extraordinary event that can help people that typically don't do that to remind them that they should donate their time, their energy, some of their assets to be to be able mm -hmm. to do that. And Be Strong is as that is either by grants or direct uh, donations. Donor, yep, donor support. Yep. And it's important for people to pick the one that they want. Yes. Right? We hope yes. that it's you, but there yes. are a lot of organizations that provide a lot of a, a lot of care. Mm -hmm. So the, there are, uh, can we share with some of the, the what people have said about uh, Be Strong? Do we have that somewhere? <laughs> Do we have that? No, we don't have um, it. I'm, I'm not sure we if might. we have it, yeah. But, but I can tell you that um, we've recently um, expanded in our service delivery through our newest card game called Social Yaks. Perfect. So I have it here. How about that? <laughs> Social Yaks. Okay, so can people, can... Or maybe yeah, the we website, okay. yes. And um, we were thinking, you know, a, a team member came to me, his name is Juan Camargo, and he said to me, hey, I'm thinking about how do we bottle what we have? We are such an amazing uh, organization, full of love, full of light, but how do we um, stretch our work even more beyond the facilitator, facilitators doing what they do every day? And so... He presented to me this idea, and I said, you know what? I'm with you till the end. Let's do it. And today we have social yaks. And we're going to play a couple. Yeah, right. it's, it's four and, levels, yeah. And so it's interesting because when you can do this and you have one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's just you and your spouse or the family, all of a sudden you're able to focus in there and sit around the table and be able to have really neat Absolutely. conversation. So yeah. Why don't you open it up and let's go. And, of course, you're supporting a local nonprofit, right? So the proceeds of the game. Um, support us to continue to do the amazing work that we do. Um, and we've used this game, believe it or not, to train organizations. So we've trained like AC Hotels, um, so many organizations. We're going to do something with Miami-Dade College. Um, we've done some work in the South with Miami-Dade College. So I'm not setting this up the best way. Juan, don't kill me here. Um, but there's four levels. And... I'm just gonna set them up here. And we both basically take a card. Is it, this is truth or dare or dare? Um, it's not truth or dare really, but it does allow you to become very, um, very connected, very vulnerable. And there's some empathy that happens when you have conversations like this. And it's, again, like what you said about peeling the onion, it goes deeper. Okay. As you go in the levels. So why don't you pick one for me? You okay? So wait, you pick one and read it. Okay. And then I'll pick one. No, so you're gonna start here. Break oh, the ice. Start here. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and I read it. Yeah. <laughs> What's something you once disliked and you now like? There was a a nearby building, right? It's actually connected to our one. I hated the people. <laughs> I kept saying this should but be. But wait, he's saying this on air, so oh my goodness. it should be mine. <laughs> Oh, I'm okay, okay. Is, what are you doing here? Right, I would right. walk in there and go, what are they still doing here? <laughs> well, 15 years later, right, we bought the building. Oh, 
Oh, right? good for you. So I now like it a lot. <laughs> because you own it, yes. yes okay. and That's it's pretty cool. extraordinary out all the things. That was the one that, that really kept this came like to me. Wow, wow. Now what wow. do we do with this? Okay, so you're going to put that in now. I'll pick one. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite season and why? Hmm. I think my favorite season would be winter. Um, I love the Christmas. I love the holiday. Um, my kids and I, we have a tradition now with my family that we buy pajamas and we wear those same Christmas pajamas and we take pictures and every year we change pajamas. So it's something cool to look forward to. We have a great breakfast in the morning. It's a lot of fun, a lot and, of memories. And in the animal world, when it changes, when seasons change, they get, they, it changes their mood. Yes. Spring is a perfect example. <laughs> yes. And in the plant industry, so that's a perfect mm. season. Okay. 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 Am I here? Is this yep. for me? You can take it up. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to the next level. Get social. Okay. Okay. How would you describe, how would your best friend describe you? Hmm. Is caring, social, quiet? Yeah. Quiet? Giving. And a good friend. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Quiet? That's surprising. The quiet one. Uh, what teacher had the biggest influence on your life? What teacher? Um, I never, as much as we've played this game, this game so much, I've never gotten this card. Um, my fifth grade teacher, Miss Hernandez, she was just spunky. She was to me like the woman that I wanted to be. She just, she had her curly wavy hair. It was cut short. Um, when we had field days, she would wear her short shorts. She had an amazing body. She was fun. She was engaging. Um, we just, she was just someone who I aspired to be. It seemed like as a teacher, even though I was in fifth grade, she really loved what she was doing. And um, we all we just had a great time with her, and she she was just great in her skin. She felt great in her skin, and you, it showed. Yeah. If I could, I would like to share. Yeah. Uh, yeah of some. course, of course. So I was in college struggling, and the professor mm. came over. What's the problem? I said, Listen, I get so frustrated. She said, Come to my class, a special mm. class. I go. It's her office. <laughs> it is a desk and two chairs. She said, What's the problem? I said, When I start to write. Something happens, and I rip the paper out of the typewriter, and I get frustrated. She says, why don't you do this? Now, this is 50 years ago. Michael, the next time that happens, stop, pause for a moment, and start over again. And 50 years later, I'm telling that story, so maybe somebody out there is, oh, yes. Yeah, and awesome. that's the way it works. And so it was extraordinary for me to be able to interpret that and, and internalize it and say it's okay yes and i learned that a lot from from yeah, her so yeah oh that's good that's all right. good oh, so let's see. all right this is the next level okay next We're level dig deeper looking back was there a turning point in your life absolutely hurricane andrew april 24th 1992. you know it by date wow i do <laughs> i was uh, the roof had been blown off one of our uh, a two-story house the walls are off. I'm up there. I the bed and all this stuff is there, crawling around up there. I said, you know, two things. First, I said, where's my marathon uh, medal from before? I said, you know, that doesn't matter because it's inside. And mm -hmm. I said, I wonder if my the 10th anniversary ring that I was about to give my wife is still here. And I found it. We are crawling on the floor, no walls. I found it where I left it, which was the bottom of a um, shell, uh, cabinet. And I gave her that ring up there. Right? Wow. So that was a turning point. Wow. So there you go. All right. I should t I should remind her tonight. <laughs> I can remind remember her that of ring that moment. and what I went through to get it to you? <laughs> wow. Extraordinary moment and big turning life about understanding where we What's are important. at. What's yeah. important. What's important. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know how I'm going to top that one. Uh, what is your happiest memory of a loved one? My happiest memory of a loved one is probably my grandmother passed away about two years ago. Um, I just loved that when I came home from school, 
Um, and I would come home so late because I was one of those kids that was in everything. So after club, then you have soccer practice. And after soccer practice, you got to come home. So I'd be home by like 8.30, 9 o'clock. I would pass out on the kitchen floor. She would never get upset. She would just be like, okay, whenever you're ready, dinner is ready for you. Do you need anything? And I was just like, thank you, Grandma. Just give me 10 minutes so I can just get up off the floor. I just loved that she wasn't, she was never rough or stern with me. She just let me be a little bit. Um, and her cooking was just amazing. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Part of this and doing this is when the other speaks, at least when I listen to you, then it helps me look inside. And then it's a really good feeling and it helps remind me of the good feelings that we could have in doing similar yes, things. Yes. So how long did you play soccer, by the way? Oh, man. Uh, three years? Yeah, three years. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. This is the final this, round. This is here. the final round, yes. So, But this is how it switches. So you're going to read it, and I will answer for you. Typically, we would go longer before we get to this round, mm -hmm. but typically, that's how it works. So let's see what you pulled in. What are two colors that represent me the most? Hmm. So I have to answer for you. Oh. Two colors that represent you the most. I would say yellow. Um, I'm going to say yellow based on what you answered about your friend and your best friend, how they would describe you. Friendly, caring. So I feel like you have that vibrancy about you that will never go away, and yellow represents that. Um, but then I would say also white, even though white I found out is a is a, a, sh a shade. Um, white, I think you're always learning, right? You're always open to learning and curious. And so you're like this blank slate and whatever you throw on there, that becomes, yeah. yeah. Terrific, thank so, you. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're gonna pick one and I'm so gonna not, And you're gonna, gonna read gonna it, answer. yes. Oh, okay. So based on what you've heard me share, what would you say I should be most proud of? Well, you're, you're very warm and you're very open, very affectionate, big smile, you care a lot, and you're a terrific person. Oh, thank you. And you were a great granddaughter. <laughs> thank you so much. Aw, you see? This is very warming. <laughs> I think I'm going to start crying pretty I soon. I see it in your eyes a little bit. I'm like, are we going to go there? Watch out, Miller. Are we going to go there? <laughs> oh, gosh. This is, this is really wonderful. Yeah. And people can get this game. Online, online on our at, website, mm -hmm. uh, bestrongintl.org. Be strong. Yep, support us. And then we also do trainings around this game because I don't think we spend a lot of time with our employees or with team members, but we don't really know them in this way. And I think it speaks volumes that when you get to know a person, you get to know how they work, how they think, and you build stronger bonds on the job that really allows performance to peak and grow. So... So I, I, I think we have plans for you to come here one yes, day. It's yes. going to be on a Monday. Yes. I'm not going to be in that yes, group, yes, so yes. people are a little bit more open, <laughs> all right? And it, this is really extraordinary just by virtue that it just calms everything down and it allows you to be open in, in whatever environment that is. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I have learned is that if I can do it here, all right, that we can do that wherever we go. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to wrap up in a, in a couple of minutes, but let's again talk about... Um, uh, on November 16th? Give Miami Day, yes. Give Miami Day. So please right. give, yes. Yeah, and, and give till right before it hurts, all right? <laughs> and, and so if you can't give money, maybe there's some other things that you can Absolutely. You can do. We're always looking for volunteers for our food drives. Um, we have those uh, monthly um, down south at uh, Demps Park. Um, and even for the financial giving, people think, and I was telling my team members this because I was educating them a little bit on fundraising, and I said, you know, we used to have single moms that would give five, ten dollars a month. And that really spoke volumes to them that someone would be willing to do that. And it's because we changed their lives in such a great way that they were willing to invest the little bit that they had to give back to this organization. And I was telling the team members, you know, if you go to the store and you purchase something and you're five dollars short, you got to put something back. Right. And so nonprofits need every dollar, you know that they can get, it counts. It's important. So no gift is too small. So one of the things we recognize, so often we give anonymously, sometimes you want people to know, sometimes 
no nothing. But when you when you give, there's something that happens inside as well. It's like I gave what I could, right? Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. I wrote a piece one time about my my 60 seconds at the stoplights, mm. and about the man that came over asking for money, mm. and I wrote it very open about it. Should I give any money? What about this? What about that? I don't want to touch the person. What about this? Mm. Should I just reach in my pocket? Whatever's in there, yeah, give it to him. Yeah. What if it's a hundred dollar bill? <laughs> Not likely, but yeah. and what are you going to do? All right, here we see he's closer. You're going to roll down the window, and then and it was about a six hundred word internal conversation, and then I said, "Oops, light screen onto my next lesson." And so, so often when we give, we learn something about ourselves and where we fit into all of this. Yes. And there are lots of, of times that things are emotionally driven, such as now across, across the world. Remember that, yes, people all over need it. But if you're going to give, all right, first think local. Mm -hmm. That's what we want because mm -hmm. this is where the biggest impact for us. Mm -hmm. If somebody has clean clothes, can they call you and, and donate that? If not, where? So typically, no. Um, that might be more of a goodwill. It's very difficult for us to accept a lot of things mm -hmm. because we end up with so much and we don't have the storage for it. Mm -hmm. So basically, our best thing would be um, kids' supplies. So if there's like maybe book bags, school supplies, things like that we would take. But furniture and things like that, um, usually when I get calls like that, I might call up branches or another colleague of mine who can accept some of those things. Yeah. So if somebody's out, it's their favorite store buying some school supplies, buy a couple extra things. Yes, right? and then donate. Yeah, right, that's sure. and that's that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Yes. You always got a big smile on your face. <laughs> Thank you. Chief Heart Officer, <laughs> Michelle Shirley, Be Thank Strong International. So Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. All right. Thank you so Enjoy. much. Folks, thank you for joining us. Remember, take care of yourself and your family. Have a good day.